Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be going over five more strong gunner builds in Deep Rock Galactic. You guys really like the first five strong gunner builds and there is way more than just five strong builds for any class in this game. So I came up with five more. This is not using any of the overclocks that we used last time. These are all new overclocks. However, some of them can be switched out. I just didn't want to put the same ones on here multiple times. I didn't want to just say just use magic bullets every time as a secondary if you need something for crowd control. But what happens if you don't have magic bullets? That wouldn't be a great tip for any of you guys. So here are some of these. First up, we're going to go with the auto cannon as our primary weapon, and we're going to be taking Big Birth as the overclock. This gets us a lot more direct damage. However, we lose out on rate of fire, we lose out on ammo, and we lose out on magazine size. Our magazine is cut in half. The overall ammo does kind of suck to lose, but you still have a lot of bullets with the auto cannon, and the rate of fire makes the gun feel a little bit clunky to me. But that's okay, because the way I build it is like this. This gets us more ammo, faster rate of fire in tier 2, more damage, because we might as well go for more damage, although in tier 3 you can pick whatever you want. Tier 4, armor breaking. Um, we're already smashing stuff in the face, we might as well break the armor if anything's trying to block. And then more damage in tier 5, so we can have all the direct damage. This one shreds through just about everything at close to medium range, and even at sometimes longer ranges, because Big Bertha does have reduced spread, so it's easier to hit targets. And this is going to be your primary go-to weapon that you're going to be using for the majority of things. It works okay against crowds, it works really well against single targets, it works quite well against big enemies like Praetorians or Guards or Oppressors, as long as you can hit them in the weak spot, same goes with Dreadnoughts. It's all around just a really solid weapon that can do almost everything besides having some lack of range, but that's just the auto cannon in general, it doesn't have that. And for a secondary to make up for that lack of range, we're going to be taking the Coil Gun with Hellfire on it. Hellfire is another fantastic overclock. This one makes it so you can light things on fire because you shoot out a fire trail now. However, you lose out on ammo and you lose out on charge speed, as well as your trail duration is now nerfed. You don't have a five second trail, you have a three second trail. It used to be five seconds and then it was really strong. It still is really strong because the heat buildup is insane. And this is really, really strong against robots. If it's turrets, you only need to fire one shot, they'll die. Any of the flying robots, as long as they stay within the fire, still does pretty high damage. The way that I build Hellfire is like this, so I'm going with extra ammo in Tier 1. That's just to make up for the lack of ammo. If you don't find that to be a big issue, you can pick any of the others. Faster reloads in Tier 2, but any of them are fine in Tier 2. Stun in Tier 3, I like that one. The shield in Tier 4, that one's also pretty nice because you can use it at any point. You can even use it to potentially stop fall damage if you're just charging up the coil gun when you land. You don't actually have to fire it. And then Tier 5, I have the larger AoE. However, the electricity is also really good if you want a double status effect. You can use this for long range as well as punching through walls like you normally can with the coil gun, and it works extremely well against crowds, where Big Bertha works fairly well against crowds, but it's better against single targets. This one makes it so your crowd control is still really strong and your range is still really good. Of course, you could pick other things to pair with Big Bertha. You could pick something like Six Shooter with a revolver or potentially experimental rounds with the burst pistol, compact mags with the burst pistol, something like that. For our second build, we're going to be going with the Lead Storm minigun. And for this, we are also going to be taking Lead Storm as our overclock. Lead Storm allows you to have a lot more damage with the only downside being that you cannot move while firing it, which is technically kind of true. If you're just firing this from the ground, then you can't really move. However, you can stop the fire rate whenever you'd like and then move. This is most commonly done by just bunny hopping around. So start firing, bunny hop, start firing, bunny hop. It does take some getting used to. This is kind of a weird way to use the minigun, but it is quite strong once you do get used to it. And anything outside of directly moving that does affect your movement is still perfectly fine. You can stand on top of Doretta, you can stand on top of Molly, and you can also grab hold of your zip lines. Any of that is fine. You can still be moving back and forth with those, at least zip lines. Um, Molly, it's going to be random, but... You can do it. The way that I build Lead Storm is like this. This is just going for full damage and giving me some amount of crowd control. This is far better against single targets. This is very similar to Big Bertha. Does tons of damage to big single targets. So we have increased accuracy in tier one, although increased rate of fire is also pretty good. Increased damage in tier two, because we might as well go for more damage. Blow through rounds in tier three. That will probably get you the most amount of value but you could also go with armor breaking. Faster spin up in tier four, pick whatever you want in tier four though, they're all great options. And then cold is the grave so that we can continue firing it at those enemies. But also something like hot bullets is really good on this too. This gets you a ton of damage, however you do need to be kind of managing your movement. For a secondary, we're gonna be pairing this with our burst pistol. And for our burst pistol, we're gonna be using experimental rounds. This one gets you more damage, however you lose out on total ammo overall. You could switch this one out for quite a few different ones though. Honestly, anything works with this. You could also switch to a secondary that gives you more crowd control, something like Hellfire Coil Gun, Magic Bullets Revolver, uh, Electro Mindlets on this could also work too, because the minigun will shred through just about everything that's single target or even to regular crowds. This is just another option for you to run and gun with. 
and assuming you start getting overwhelmed by enemies and maybe you don't have your shield up or maybe you just don't want to be using your shields right away. The way that I build experimental rounds is like this, going with extra accuracy in tier one. I just like this so that it's easier to hit longer range targets on the fly. It helps me deal with things like spitters or Mac Terra quickly, but any of the other two tier one options are really great too. Tier two, I like going to the faster reload speed. Again, this is your choice. Pick whichever one you'd like. Tier three, more damage, because why not? We don't really need the larger mag size. It's not a bad thing, but I like the extra damage. Tier four, even more damage when we're hitting those weak spots. Again, we can take out things like Mac Terra spitters really fast. Uh, assuming we were hitting them in the weak spots. If you don't find that that's super necessary though, uh, both the armor breaking and the extra bolts do help with this one too. I'd probably go with extra bullets over armor breaking, assuming you're hitting the weak spot the majority of the time. If not, then armor breaking is not a terrible choice either. And then I like going with the tier five stun. There's no real reason to have six round burst on this because you, we're already doing enough damage per burst with this to kill most enemies without too much trouble. For our third build, we're gonna be using salvo module as our primary weapon for the hurricane guided rocket system. This allows you to have the rocket shotgun and you can fire it normally, but you do have to tap fire it to get the regular movement speed missiles. Outside of that, it doesn't come with any downsides. The way that I like to build it is like this. So I'm going with extra ammo in tier one, but any of them are fine in tier one. I just like the extra bullets. Armor breaking in tier two. Faster rate of fire in tier three. I would highly recommend this one because this does load your rockets faster when you're ready to fire. I find it to be pretty annoying if you don't have this. It does take a little bit of time. Although if you're only using this to fire out two to three rockets or four to five rockets into crowds, it's not as bad. But if you do intend on charging this all the way up to nine, it will take you substantially longer than if you didn't have the faster rate of fire. Increased AOE damage in tier four. The weak spot damage can work on this one too, but the rockets, at least when you're firing them out like a shotgun, you can't really control where they go and sometimes they do kind of go wide so it's going to be more difficult to hit weak spots unless you're right up next to an enemy in which case then if you play like that it works perfectly fine but i find the aoe damage helps a little bit more and then stun in tier 5 however the fire in tier 5 is also really good if you wanted to take this with something like volatile bullets nitroglycerin i really wouldn't recommend for this particular build it's just not as great as stun or uh, the fire and i also wouldn't recommend taking the fire on Dreadnought missions because you're just losing out on damage then. Uh, use this like you would a rocket shotgun at close to medium range. Other than that, if enemies are further away, you can tap fire this and just weave them into them. It's really great for taking out spitters that way. And just with this alone, you kind of have all of your bases covered. You've got close to medium range covered with the shotgun and even out to longer ranges just with the regular fire. So with the secondary, I also have a secondary that kind of deals with everything and that is going with six shooter on our revolver. Six shooter will get you a faster rate of fire and it will get you more rounds with your revolver. You also get extra ammo from it, but your reloads do take a little bit longer and your base spread is worse. I don't find that last part to be that big of a deal because the revolver doesn't have a whole lot of spread. So this is less noticeable, at least to me. The way that I usually build six shooter is like this, going with faster reload speed in tier one. This is to make up for that slower reload speed. I don't really care for the slower reload speed. It does feel a bit sluggish to me. Sometimes I don't mind it though if I'm just running born ready because I almost always end with the hurricane So if I'm not switching to the revolver too often, I rarely ever reload it then going with extra ammo in tier 2 and 4 This is just so that we get more shots overall I really like spamming this into enemies it does a lot of damage to them weak spot damage in tier 3 because it just gets you the most amount of value With this weapon and then going with increased accuracy when we're running around in tier 5 We don't really need the neurotoxin rounds. You could take them if you'd like I run them every once in a while but completely your call and like i said earlier you can kind of just use this however you want it works well it feels like just a straight upgrade to the revolver usually i'm using it to pick off enemies or to just deal high burst damage to enemies once they get stunned from like the rockets moving on to our fourth strong build we once again have the hurricane guided rocket system as our primary weapon and this time we're going to be using jet fuel homebrew this one gets you a lot more damage as well as a faster moving rocket substantially faster moving even more so if you want to take the tier two for even faster movement speed then it's kind of a hit scan at most ranges. This is in exchange for our AOE damage and our ammo. The way that I like building this is like this. So we're going with extra damage in tier one, armor breaking in tier two. With both of these combined, you can two shot a grunt on any difficulty, which is pretty useful. Faster rate of fire in tier three. This one really helps. Uh, you could take the larger mag size here. You don't need the faster rate of fire, but I do find it to be just pretty handy to use in general. More weak spot damage in tier four. This does let you one hit kill grunts so long as you hit them in the head on any difficulty and then stun in tier 5 so that we can stun larger enemies like Praetorians. Lots of upfront damage, lots of fast moving rockets that can deal with a lot of enemies really quickly. However, the overall uh, sustained damage is a little bit less than the standard hurricane I would say because it's not as good for crowds 
as uh, the standard hurricane is, and it also just runs through ammo faster because we just have less overall. So to bank up for our lack of ammo with our primary, we're going with a secondary that has a lot of bolts. We're going once again with the burst pistol, and this time we're taking compact mags. This gets us a lot more ammo. However, we do have a slower rate of fire and a slower reload. The way that I like to build compact mags is actually the same way that we just built experimental rounds. I find this build works fairly well with most burst pistol builds. So increased accuracy in tier one, but again, any of them are fine. Increased reload speed. I would recommend reload speed or extra rate of fire in tier two, because otherwise the gun's going to feel awkward in one way or the other. I don't really see the need to take the recoil reduction. I, I don't I don't find it helps that much. I usually go with the reload speed, so that is a bit quicker. Increased damage in tier three. Again, you can pick whatever you'd like. Increased weak spot damage in tier four. You could go with extra ammo here if you want the most amount of ammo that you could have. That is also an option. And then stun in tier four. I just find that more useful than the six round burst, especially with the slower rate of fire with this thing. This gun you're just going to be using to clear up smaller things, clear things up at a distance. Um, assuming that you can't just easily kill them with the hurricane and then hurricane you're going to be using for anything big or to take out things quickly because it can kill them very fast and then for our fifth and final gunner build we are going to be using combat mobility as our primary overclock with the heavy auto cannon this also cuts our magazine down similar to big bertha it's actually the same amount it cuts it in half however we do have uh, reduced spread so our gun is more accurate we, we can move much faster when firing this and we also get a faster rate of fire growth which is pretty important especially with our tier two option the way that i build combat mobility is just like this so i'm going with extra ammo in tier one it, this was just so good for the auto cannon you don't run out of bullets if you take it so i just really like that however if you do find the magazine size to be lacking a bit you could go with the larger mag size in tier one and go back up to that 110. i do really like the faster rate of fire in tier two this makes it so your growth is much quicker and with just two shots from this you immediately hit your top rate of fire. So you can get either the increased damage in tier five or the tankiness in tier five. I usually go with the tankiness. Tier three, it's your choice. Pick whichever one of these you like the most. I usually go with extra damage. The other two are really good too. Armor breaking in tier four, but either of these are great too on this one. Pick whichever one you like. And then I really do like going with the extra tankiness in tier five. It makes it once again, so as soon as I start firing this, I have all the damage reduction already on myself. For a secondary, I'm going to be taking that Bulldog Heavy Revolver once again, and this time we're going to be taking Elephant Rounds with it. Elephant Rounds it is extremely hard-hitting overclock. This pretty much gives you a pocket sniper rifle for gunner. Doubles your overall damage. However, you lose out on ammo, you lose out on mag size, so you only have three shots then. And you get a lot more spread per shot and a lot more recoil per shot. This is quite noticeable, and if you're not using this at close range, it is going to be difficult to fire follow-up shots from this. However, most of the time you only need one shot to connect with the enemy, or it's a stationary enemy at a longer distance, something like a spitballer where it doesn't really matter if you have a ton of recoil either. Most of the time I'm just pulling this out to pick off something like a tri-jaw, or I'm using it to hit a Praetorian that's at a long distance, or a menace, or whatever it might be, something that's kind of dangerous at a distance. The way that I build elephant rounds is like this, the same way we actually build six shooter. So extra ammo in tier two and tier four, extra reload speed in tier one. The increased accuracy is not really necessary in tier one. Again, I find it to be uh, just fine. Increased weak spot damage in tier three. This lets you hit extremely hard with elephant rounds. And then the increased accuracy when running around. I like that one because you really don't need neurotoxins in elephant rounds. Most of the time you're just going to flat out kill anything. The poison is not going to deal enough damage for that to really matter. The idea of this build is to run around and just kind of run and gun with the auto cannon. And then if there is any large enemies or any enemies that are a very long distance that you want to take out quickly, switch to your revolver and pick them off with the elephant rounds. So those are the five strong builds. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you guys so very much for watching it. I really do appreciate it. If you guys have any other really fun builds for Gunner, be sure to leave them down in the comments below because there is a whole lot more really fun builds too and really strong builds that you can make for Gunner. Special thanks to the supporters here on the channel. I really do appreciate all the support. It helps me out immensely. If you'd like to see more Deep Rock builds, be sure to click over here on this playlist right now. It should take you to a full list of them. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.